Hey guys, welcome to another Talk Magic. Today I've got a very special Talk Magic with one of my favourite magicians. His name is Woody Aragon. He is the first Spanish magician that I have interviewed on Talk Magic and he is amazing. I remember over a decade ago, I uh, read and reviewed on the Wizard Product Review his book, A Book of English, and I've been doing routines out of that book ever since. He is a powerhouse of a creator of card magic, and this is an amazing interview. Now, the reason I'm doing a little intro to this video is because I've had a bit of a problem. I've been editing this video for a long while, and for some reason, the sound quality was not very good at all on my mic. On Woody's mic, it was absolutely brilliant. On my mic, it was not that good. And I only found out about it afterwards, and I've spent a long time in the edit trying to make it sound better. I have made it sound better, but it's still not brilliant. And I thought, well, should I redo the, the interview? Which I didn't want to do because what Woody is talking about is pure gold, and I didn't know if we could capture lightning in a bottle twice or if I just actually upload it. So I've made the sound as good as possible. On Woody's end, it's brilliant. And 80% of the interview is Woody talking. But when you hear me talking, it sounds like I'm almost in an echo chamber. Um, it's a lot better than it was, but I just want to apologize. I want to say I'm really sorry. Um, I don't know how it happened. It hasn't happened before. It hasn't happened since. But I made the decision to not refilm it and put the video up as is. Uh, Woody performs and explain. well, he doesn't explain, but he performs some amazing magic. He covers a whole bunch of subjects and he is such a nice guy. So there's not much of the interview where I'm talking and when I am, you can hear what I'm saying, uh, but Woody's mic is absolutely fine. So again, guys, I want to apologise. I'm really sorry. Hopefully it won't affect your enjoyment of this amazing interview because, guys, this interview is absolutely phenomenal. Let's run that interview right now. Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Ray. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic, and I cannot tell you how excited I am. I have so much respect for this man. I remember reviewing his book over a decade ago, falling in love with magic, and I have been a massive fan ever since. He is a legend of card magic, the very first fan position on Magic TV, the one and only. Woody Aragon, how are you doing, Woody? Hey, hey, Craig. Pleasure to talk with you. I'm so excited. I am really? so excited. I, I think the world of you, you know that. I think that you are absolutely brilliant. You are so inspirational. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing. So thank you so much for coming on the uh, channel. I really appreciate uh, it. it. It's a pleasure to be here. And for me, it's a surprise that when people tell me something like that, oh, you are... Okay, that means I am very old now. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Seasons, I think, is the word. Seasons. <laughs> Experience. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have literally written the book on card magic over and over again. You have created so much amazing card material. I told you the other day, I was watching one of your new downloads on yes. seven Tech, and you mentioned on there at one point in passing that you know over a hundred routines, you've created over a hundred routines in size seven alone. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but the secret, correct, is 80% of what I create is very bad. <laughs> But, but the trick is, if you have the criteria to, to understand, oh, this is mine, but it's bad. I don't sell this. I, I put in my... But it's, it's true. Most of the things that you create are not very good, of course, because it's a question of quantity also. No? For, uh, at least for me, no? my style is I enjoy a lot to create, to develop tricks. And then I enjoy creating things, and sometimes the thing is not very good. So the secret to have a lot of tricks is that. But fortunately, perhaps like 20% of the tricks that you create are enough good to put in your repertoire or start to publish or share with the rest of magicians. You know what? Already you're hitting us with amazing, amazing, amazing advice. And I want to talk later on about creativity, and I want to try oh. it. I want to pick your brain and find out more about how you create magic. But okay. before we do that, okay. I want to find out more about you. Okay. So I want to find out how you got into magic. Because obviously, there's some iconic magicians in Spain. Yeah. 
I mean, there's some phenomenal magicians in Spain. <laughs> you, Juan Tamarí, Danny Giordi, the list goes on and on and on. Well, I suppose my question is, when did you get into magic? I mean, how did that yeah. happen? What was your origin for it? Yeah, I, I, am, I am very fortunate. I am very fortunate. When I explain this to some people, uh, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> lucky. It's a question of luck. I, I, I always loved magic, even when I was a child. Uh, and I don't remember myself like a lay people. I remember me like I have, uh, I remind me, sorry, my English is cherry, what I told you, and I need to advertise to everybody. My English is very bad, but I will try, I will do my best. Uh, and I remind me being like two years, three years old, a baby, and trying to emulate some tricks. I remember the news, the newspaper tear and restore it. I don't restore, but I tear the newspaper probably because I saw any magicians on TV or whatever. So I always liked, liked magic. But when I was 14, 15 years old, coincidental, totally, in my city, Toledo, in Spain, there were the national convention. And then I go to my home and I cross the theater. And in the theater were a big gala, big show with Paul Daniels, uh, Pendragons, James Dimmer, uh, wow, this is amazing, this this name. For me, I, 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 I didn't know any, any name, but they were magicians, real magicians. I never saw magic live before. Oh, I want to see this, so I don't pay, I go, to do. I sit and I wait. And it was the close-up gala. And I, it was first time I saw magic live, performed live, not on TV or, and it was Tommy Wonder, Bernard Belize, Ascanio, Camilo, and at the end, more people, no? But I remember the ending, it was Juan Chamariz with Pepe Carroll, another magician from Spain, very, very, very good, performing together like two gamblers, no? And the show was, wow, amazing. And I felt something so strong that I choose, okay, I want to be magic, magician my whole life. And the good thing is, in Spain, the community, it was very small, but very good energy, very friendly. So I started to travel to Madrid every week and every Monday we met me and more people of my age, you know, but Miguel Ángel G, Alberto Figueredo, Leide Rubiales, Dani Da Ortiz, with Juan Tamariz. Juan Tamariz, like the master and sharing his secrets with everybody every Monday, the whole day, you no, know, we started the whole night a la Spanish no the whole night we dinner together at the beginning of the session and when the sun rises the next day we are to together still <laughs> talking about magic and and then I go to bed once per week for nine I don't know ten years so it was incredible and then <laughs> when I explain this to other magicians and they say, no, I learned with Juan Tamariz one to one for a lot of years, we very friends. And, and I remember Penn Gillette from Penn & Teller that we, we are very good friends. In, in one occasion I tell this story and he says, it's like I like to play guitar and I say, no, uh, but I learned with Jimi Hendrix for 10 years, <laughs> something like this. No? I, 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 ha I, I was very lucky to have Juan and not only Juan Tamariz, a lot of magicians of the same generation, they were geniuses, Camilo Vázquez, Ascanio, eh, Luis García, that, that se six, seven people, very, very clever, very creative in that time, and they create a really, a real artistic school. So me and other magicians were totally influenced by that. And, and did, you, did you go and become a professional magician? No, 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 no. I, I, I would love it, but you know what happened? Uh, <laughs> my mother was super protective mother. <laughs> I don't live in, in Madrid. I live in Toledo that is close, one hour, but very small town. Uh, well, and nobody in my... The people that I know, not in my family, not in my friends, nobody is artist there. Everybody has other. So for me, it was very, very strange uh, to, to, to be a magician like a profession. 
I of course I, I wanted no but if sometimes I said oh I would like to be a magician somebody says no but probably it's very bad idea no because you are not so good <laughs> probably you will be hungry because nobody want to pay to see you <laughs> so I started to do video games and for a lot of time I had a company creating video games in Spain but at the same time I was an amateur magician no but little by little you are growing, you go to a convention, you go to competition, you start to uh, win the competitions, no? And then I, I discover, oh, but magicians likes my magic, no? Because it, and in a moment, somebody asks you, can you do a lecture? Can you do a show? Can, and, oh, perhaps I, I have in the same money performing magic <laughs> than in my other job. I left the other job and then I started to be a professional magician. But I was 28 years old when I started as a professional. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. Wow. So I've got lots of questions from what you just said. I think the first question is, the first time I met you was at Macmillan. Yeah, in Macmillan's, yeah. And you were competing in the competition. Yes. And you did brilliantly. I absolutely loved your <laughs> I suppose my question is, do you have any advice on it? Why did you enter competition? Well, is it because you wanted to be a professional or is it because you just wanted to compete? The real secret is I love competitions in magic. I love, I have a lot of friends. I don't know what do you think about this, but a lot of magicians, they have the idea of to compete is wrong. No, it's like, or you compete only if you can obtain jobs or somebody sees you and contract you or perhaps you win and then the award will make you famous or something like that no but in my case it's more basic of course i like everything no but for me it's more when i started to do magic as i was an amateur here in spain i didn't perform for other magicians i always perform for a lay audience but my friends were the magicians in the club so someday i have an idea, a new idea, and I want to show to them. And, and somebody asked me, why, why you don't prepare and act with these new ideas you are having? Put together 10 minutes, you go a competition, and the whole community in Spain, they see the act. And then I go there, and it was so funny to prepare the act, to rehearsal. You, you are friends with the other competitors, no? A, a lot of people think that there are some kind of um, antagonism, I don't know if my English is... No, 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 <laughs> I created yeah. a word? No, and, okay. Antagonism. But it's not true. In fact, everybody in magic, you are together. You are like partners in a gala that they don't book you, but you are going to perform no? in, the, in, the, in the convention. And I have incredible friends now because someday I compete against them. No, But, but we are friends because of that. And also I perform. When you compete, you perform for magicians. So it's like you are performing for your colleagues and they can judge what you are doing in a completely different way than lay people because lay people, they can tell you, ah, but your palming is very good now. <laughs> if lay people tell you your palming is very good, it's not very good. <laughs> okay. So uh, the thing is, I learned a lot competing. I learned, I, I grow uh, as an artist doing my tricks in competitions and when I did every competition in Spain I thought oh I need to look for more <laughs> what competitions are uh, outside of Spain and somebody I think it was Juan Juan Tamari told me there is a close-up competition in Macmillan's in London and then I go there and I, if I remember well I I competed three times in Macmillan's probably you remember the last one because it's when I won yeah. But I did some previous competitions that I don't won or I only won a second prize or but uh, I competed three times. I, I had a lot of competitions in between until 2015. No? Until 2015, I competed in FISEMS, I competed in everything that I can go and compete and do my act. I did it because because I enjoy it. That's the reason. Well, for those people that don't know McMillan, the the, mm. the competition is so difficult and the fact that you won it i mean that just speaks volumes with really. i mean that <laughs> well that 
that that's the, the thing is it was one of the top competitions in close-up magic in the world it was incredible we are we were competing in london magician from the whole world and i remember i started to go to 4f in the states because obi o'brien saw my act in, in macmillan so it was it was amazing it was incredible but i can tell you that i prepared some very work on me on the acts the first two times i competed but the third one that was when i won it was like i was very relaxed is okay i will do my this trick for instance <laughs> nothing super so i was not expecting but sometimes magic happens for real and what happened this convention and i, and I am completely sure that was the, the the reason I won is we had a mistake. I was doing a musical routine and the music don't work. And instead to freezing or be afraid, and I said, ah, you have no music. Okay, I will sing by myself. And then I sing my own music. Well, <laughs> at the same time I'm performing, people start to laugh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And then as I saw you are um, making some reaction, you grow, no? Because you think, oh, I am good, I am good. So my 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 trick was much better this day because the reason, and at the end, everybody was in love and, <laughs> and they told me, okay, you won. But it's an example that mistakes sometimes helps you. Yeah? It's interesting that. That's really good advice, actually. Adapting, you know, and not letting anything get to you and thinking on the spur of the moment. That's, that's very, very important. Right. Uh, 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 because what do you, I, I, I am interested, I'm going to interview you. <laughs> what do you think about competitions? Do you think is, you share with me this or? I, no, yeah, I love competitions. Okay, 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 okay. And I also love watching them. I really <laughs> do because when you're in the audience, you're watching a, a really good competition. People have caught their A game. You normally see something that you probably would never see in yeah. any other performing environment. Yeah, I agree with you. When I go to FISM or national conventions, I miss a lot of the lectures because I think, okay, there's a lecture, but probably I can see the same guy lecturing in another place. What I am go not going to see anymore is the competitors. So I see the whole competition in every convention that there is competitions there. And I prefer that, that perhaps watching lectures or shows. <laughs> I, we, we love competitions, I think. You probably learn just as much watching the competition. And, and I think the more, um, the, the, the new pro proposals, I don't know if my English I, I am expressing, no, but uh, when an artist has something new that is going to be very good, it's probably you discover this in the competition, no? Yeah. Because if I'm going to see, uh, I don't know, Max Maven lecture, and I love Max, but I know what I am going to, to see, no? Because I know the guy, but in a competition, you can see terrible acts, and, and we see a lot of terrible acts, but you can see some parts that, acts that don't win or whatever, but you think, oh, but this is very, very interesting, no? So, yeah. Absolutely. Have you ever competed in prison? Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I competed in FISEN several times. I, I won to a, a continental FISEN, this second FISEN that in America and in Europe. But in 2015, I compete in Rimini in Italy. And apparently, I won. They told me I won. Uh, the, the judges thought my act could be, we, 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 we will never know, no? Because you know what happened, it's close. But the feeling is, oh, this guy did some of the best acts or perhaps the best act, but you know what happened? I did six seconds more than that the allowed time and they disqualified me. <laughs> so it was very strange for me because it's like, uh, Okay, but but I did it. I, I, <laughs> you know, people ask me, are you going to come back to Fison to compete? And I and I think I did it that. 
I have not the trophy in my home because a uh, question of time, but not about the magic. The magic is, uh, and as I think, comp uh, competition is to uh, to uh, no obligarte. What is the name in English? Uh, to force you. I, 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 I know I, but yeah. yeah, to make improve and work in, a, in an act and, and also to make some people see new people creating their new magic, no? Um, it's like a commun co to communicate the, the new ways in magic. And then I thought, okay, I have, I, I am old now. I am 47 now. <laughs> Uh, I did a lot of competition in my whole life. I published a lot of magic in, in my books. People know me. I don't need a, comp a prize to... So for me, it was like, it's okay. No, you know, I was not very angry. Oh, they... For me, it was okay. Okay. Of course, I would like to, to have the, the, the trophy. But I was there. I was... I did something enough good. Um, Okay, I did six more seconds. Okay, that's that's it's, that's okay for me you know, in the artistic part, you know. Bottom line is, it's the, it's the real achievement of just being able to compete with this. Yes. Like you yes. Can just walk in the door and go right. Okay, I'm going to compete. You've got to be. At the top of your no, game. you 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 need. There is a process, you know, because you need to go to a, another competition. Some people need to in your club, your president or somebody need to say, okay, I testify that this guy has the enough quality because if not, you, you, you can't compete in, in FISM now, no? because there is a lot of magicians in the world and they have a limited space. No? Well, for anybody that's watching this interview oh. that wants to compete and wants to do magic competitions and they're at the beginning of their career, what advice would you give them? Do it. The first is do it. Don't doubt. Don't. The first is go to compete and enjoy the procedure of compete and enjoy performing and forget the prices or forget. Don't suffer. No. My first competitions, I remember I was there to lose. I, 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 I am. I, I accepted that. I am the new, you know, I, 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 I just arrived to magic. Uh, no, no, I am here to lose. And I didn't lose. I won third. But I was super happy with the third. And then I see another friend that with more experience and he was second. And he was very angry. Oh, second. I deserve third, <laughs> you know. So the, your attitude can make you suffer or be angry or whatever and perhaps your magic is very good but there is another people that also perhaps is very good it's nothing against you but i learned so much about uh, magic in competitions that i think more you compete better magicians you, you are going to and, and i think you can grow and you can evolve as a magician also performing for lay people or doing contracts or doing but with competition, the the process is very fast. It's very fast. If you have a trick that is so-so and you compete with this trick three years, in three years, probably it's a masterpiece. <laughs> I can tell you. No, because you, you have pushed a lot of effort for only 10 minutes that you are going to. So if you, my advice is no fear and go and compete and compete and compete and compete. And of course, if you compete a lot, you will have a lot of prizes. I have in my CV, if you, Budi Aragon, how many awards? And there is like 15, 20 awards, no? And people tell me, oh, but you have a lot. Yeah, because perhaps I competed 60 times. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the times that you don't win, there are not in the CV, no? People forget that. So, yeah, I, 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 my advice is the important thing is the experience and not the award. Mm. That makes that's that's really good advice. It really is. And what about trick selection? Like obviously you're a card magician. Mm -hmm. um, some people say that when you compete, you should do the stuff that you would normally do at a gig. Whilst other people say you should create an act just for the competition. Mm. Which way would you go with that? Really? In my in my case, I, I I agree. I think that both approaches are are good. I, I saw some acts created in that way that are very good. But in my case, the the thing is my style 
is not very visual and very fast and very short. You know that usually I do long routines with a lot of participation. With, so my tricks, more of my tricks are between five and nine minutes. So for me, it's like when I go to compete, I choose one and I do this trick and it's perfect for the competition. I never created something especially for competition. That is true. That is true. Usually I choose one trick of my repertoire and work on it to make that piece better. No? How can I make this better for the competition? But never, uh, oh, I have, I have five different ideas or five different tricks completely apart and I try to put together to create an act. I saw good results with this uh, approach, but it was not mine. Fantastic. Hmm. Now you mentioned the new game, you talked about your oh. style. And your style is, I think the best way to describe it is completely and totally chaotic, bonkers, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Like, I watch you perform, it's like you have no idea what's going on. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like you seemingly can't possibly be in control of the cards because it seems like there's there's no way you can know what's happening. <laughs> and then all these incredible things start happening. And it's the same style I've seen with a lot of Spanish musicians. Yeah. Is this a style that just everybody has in, in, in Spain? Or where did your style come from? Not everybody. That's true that there are incredible magicians in Spain. And in Spain, we have Juan Tamariz, that is the great exponent in this style. But, uh, and, and the cash for, for over, whatever and, and always is a miracle <laughs> that is the important thing always is a miracle but uh, but arturo de ascanio was a master that was very elegant with the handling gabi pareras a master very good friend of mine he died in the last year it was a terrible loss but great 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 magician super clever that, and he did magic more poetic more uh, aesthetical so not every spanish magician do this style but juan do this and for some people it's easy to fit in that style because i think the spanish culture fits very well with that style uh, korean people are very good doing manipulation because in some way they are very disciplined people very aesthetical very so it fits in that category and in close-up with a deck of cards is very similar to you are playing games with friends and this is something very spanish no we we uh, the, the people i remember my grandpa uh, in the in the village and he go there and he play with other people for the whole afternoon enjoying laughing ha 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 and I think that fits a little with our culture and also also we are in Spain we are chaotic people and we are not very you know we are not square people but also I think we feel a little like the good con artist no when you are going to fool somebody for serious things like steal money or whatever you need he never suspect that you are more clever than him and in magic sometimes uh, i see magicians that they want to look cool i am very cool i do look i am very skillful and if the spectator think you are very skillful when the car appear in your pocket he will think you take it but if you are very clumsy and the cars fall and and later the car is in the pocket spectator probably will think it's not this guy is not able to do this no or for instance you know i do a lot of memorized deck or memorizations and i calculation i use a lot of uh, brain uh, techniques but when i'm performing i pretend to forget the names of the spectators or <laughs> so people think oh this guy is <laughs> you know no a little uh, unorthodox. He, he's not the skillful magician that we have, like the uh, in, in our mind, like the topic, no? Uh, the, the, not the topic uh, in English, el arquetipo. 
But do you understand me, no? Yes. What the people expect of a magician is a guy that is very skillful and he can do everything very fast with your hands. Well, in Spain, even some of us, we can do it. We like to pretend <laughs> we can't, no? But this style also is uh, Leonard Green's style, no? It's not the Spanish, but it fits very well. When Leonard Green shuffles a deck, the, the, the cards are on the table and he needs to collect and he's like, oh, this guy, he loses everything, no? And he's controlling everything what happened. And we enjoy that, that feeling. But it seems with that style, that you can almost get away with anything because the audience is very disarmed. They're not expecting it to almost be very good because it's so chaotic that you, I've seen you do stuff and it's just so blatant. <laughs> Nobody sees it. And, and you always surround it. Like every single time I've seen you, there's people yeah. everywhere, people looking over your shoulder. And is that the style that you like? Is that the environment you like? Of, of course, at the end, you need to do what you enjoy and what you... The thing is, perhaps I, I grow up in this environment. Also, I enjoy a lot Magic of Juan Tamarit. And then I thought, OK, I, I'm going to try. And I enjoy very much surrounded, uh, looking. But you said something very interesting. You said probably if the spectators see that you are not skillful, that you are not very well, well dressed, that you are not... L, perhaps he thinks this guy is not bit very good, no? In Spain, everybody thinks magician is not going to be very good. <laughs> I mean, they were, not now, not now, thanks to culture and, and magic festivals uh, and the work of Juan Chamariz in TV, now people has more culture in magic. But 20 years ago, the expectation always it was like, the magician is a guy that He's to fool me, and uh, no, you are not going to fool me. Let me, let me, uh, 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 you know, this attitude. So if you are very innocent, you disarm this barrier, no? And when you make to feel the impossible to somebody, nothing import. Nothing, nothing is important in the rest of the elements. They don't see, oh, I have no idea how the car bend it rise to the top, but the guy don't look very skillful or the guy, don't, no. Now, this is not important because you make them feel. So at the end, I think it's a tool, no? We, we, we choose what do you want to, to use. I saw some magicians that they are very elegant and they try to emulate the style of Juan or Danny da Ortiz or, and also it, it don't work because you need to do what your your body asks. No, it's like who you are. No, try to put the magic in who you are. And the truth is, I am a chaotic people. <laughs> I am I am not very skillful in my whole in my natural life. So that's the reason, perhaps, that this this style fits very well with me. And you've mentioned Juan a few times, and you've talked about him being a mentor. What was it like having Juan Tamarix as a mentor? I mean, the guy is a legend. It's worldwide, you know. Wow. What I mean, wow, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible. It's something that uh, first you feel very fortunate. Second, he's a master. He's a great mind in magic. He is magic. His his conversation is every time about magic, and his mind is always thinking in magic. But also, he's a very great person, no? We, when we met and we start to have a deep connection and we, uh, with the years, we become very good friends and we go to dinner also like a person, like a people. Chamarit is incredible. He's a very good friend of everybody, very humble. This guy that is God and he... Uh, super generous, super generous. I, 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 I know that some people thinks, okay, if I have money, I can go to Juan Tamarit and I can pay and he will show me. And no, it, it don't work like this. Perhaps he will show you something. But with us, with Danny, with Robiales, with me, with Gea, with, an, with a lot of people, he share everything he has, f not only for free, like for, for create the community. Like, okay, we are a community. We, 
my competence. Do you have this word in English? Competence, competencia, no? The uh, if if you have a shop and another guy open another yeah. shop. Competition. Competition, okay. The, the other magician is not my competitor. My competitor is the path magic. So if we magicians can work together to do the magic of all of us much better, it's good. Because later for the spectator, the spectator is comparing magic with other arts. So he was always super, super generous. Also, he wrote my foreword for Book It English. He opened me the international market. I, people don't know me. I go to, I don't know, I go to Magic Castle and I go there. Who you are? Oh, no. no, I am a friend of Juan Tamariz. Oh, Juan Tamariz. They open the door. Come, come, and, you know. So, so it was, I was very, very fortunate and I will love Juan for the rest of my life, of course, for sure, yeah. Well, what, obviously you've learned a lot from Juan. Before we move on with your career, uh -huh. let me ask you one question. You have, what's the one big thing that you've learned I know you learned so much. But what, uh, if you had to say the one big thing that you learned, oh, oh, that's that's very difficult one. That's that's a very difficult one, because because as you said, I learned a lot of things, and not only in magic, also in life, no? Because he's a mentor, so his life inspires you, and he told you. Uh, when he traveled and he met people and and how he relate with the with the audience and with the people with the friends with the family and sometimes you have in a bad time or whatever and his advice is like a master Yoda no <laughs> it's like <laughs> for me so for me it's very 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 difficult really correct I think I can't to choose one thing I can tell you something in magic perhaps and magic one of the things that Juan understood and I, th I think he was the the only one, not the only one, but his, his mind uh, idea, if we want to reduce Juan to a um, single idea, is he understood what makes different magic to other arts. No? He thought, okay, in magic I, there is comedy, but there is comedians. In magic, there is aesthetic things, but there are uh, theater. In magic, we tell a story, but also there is movies, there are literature. Uh, in magic, you, ca you take some people to participate, but in some kind of theaters, you can make this kind of... What is what defines the experience of magic? And he thinks the impossible, no? When something happens and you... <gasps> this feeling. This feeling is only in magic. So we are going to work to improve this feeling, no? And I think this philosophy, for me, it, it changes everything, no? Mm. Mm. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. It really is. Uh, I don't agree. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no, I agree. But I think it's very interesting also, magic with comedy, magic with music, magic with... I, I am not a Buddhist, but to know to mix things because you know are mixing instead to do it this because you think it's like this is an advantage, no? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about, uh, obviously, we got to the point in your career where you're, you're doing competition, the international yes. market has opened up for you, and you mentioned the word lectures. Now, in that whole time period, you, you started releasing magic. The first thing that I think you put out was the Book of England, right? Yes. Yes, I did some some little pieces before because I published some tricks in uh, semi-automatic card magic, the series of Steve Dim, because he invited some Spanish magicians to publish some tricks, and I gave him I don't remember five or six, and it was the first time I appeared in a book in English, and then I started to do some lectures and I went to competition. I started to tra I started to travel. And my friends always they ask me, oh, Buddy, but this is very good. This is very good. You need to publish when you are going to write a book in English. <laughs> so I thought, OK, I'm going to write a book in English. <laughs> and then I, I published my book in English in 2011, if I remember well. And it was a success. I think there is a lot of combination of things. Of course, I think the stuff in the book is very good. 
because it was something that I developed for years and I did a lot of time in front of lay people. I know it works, no? It was the first time the love ritual was created, what, what published, no? In the, tal, the trick that I created in which you take four cards and the whole audience rip and at the end, and now everybody in the whole world is doing this trick. I love that. Of course, <laughs> I, I love to because I, oh, it's not something subject, I am not going to be immodest here. It's Obviously, it's a very good trick. No, it's like, it's no no discussion about this because everybody is doing this trick. It's uh, I don't know, Penn and Teller, uh, Luis de Matos, uh, everybody do this trick. No, and it was in that book, etc. But also, I think I was winning competitions at the same time, so people is interested. Oh, who is this guy? Who won in SAM? Oh, Woody Aragon. Who is this guy? Oh, he has a book, and then so. The combination of timing and the quality of the book, of the tricks of the book, I think makes that it was bestseller and suddenly it was almost immediately. No, I published this in 2011. In 2012, I had seven, eight, nine conventions internationally. If I travel perhaps one country per year or two countries per year, suddenly I started to travel, to travel, to travel, to travel. And in the last, before the pandemic, I was doing two countries per month. It was, and then my career started in lecturing and in mostly magic festivals around the world. No, And all was because, I think, because the book, it was the, the moment. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, here's a question for you oh? with regards to your magic. Yes. And the that you create. Yes. You're quite unique in that you do a lot of magic that's easy, semi-automatic, self-working. Yes. But you also are very, very, very good at sleight of hand. And some of your routines are, are real knuckle busters. You don't normally see that. You normally see somebody who focuses on very easy stuff or somebody that focuses on... A, but you... You combine the two, don't you? Yeah, but but I think the 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 trick, let's say the trick is, what I am looking for is I I, I want to fool the people <laughs> when I do a trick. I want to fool the the people and I want uh, the trick convey emotions the strongest the trick can be. No, it's like. Uh, it, a metaphor. It's like I hear the trick, no? I have the idea and I, what do you want? And sometimes he says, I want to be a technical trick, no? <laughs> and sometimes he wants to be a self-working. I, I never thought, I never think in the terms of the method. If the trick is much better because it's self-working, then I will do. Sometimes you have a trick that is very good, but if you remove every technique, the trick is very bad because some things are very easy to do, forcing a car with a classic force, but if I want to do, I don't touch, take the deck, um, cut, or, or count 10, and we add the digits, and you count again, and then the trick is, ah, I don't like, no? But sometimes mathematical principles are amazing, because you, you do nothing, you don't touch, everything is, let's, put the sample of the love ritual. The love ritual works because everybody do it at the same time. So obviously I can't use a slate of hand. At the beginning when I created this trick, perhaps I think, well, perhaps it's much better if I do only myself and then I can palm it. It will be a terrible decision no? in this case. So I, I, the trick is I don't enjoy a lot the technique. no. Even I can do a slate of hand, I don't enjoy a slate of hand. I know magicians that they are very good, so they enjoy to do it, no? Do you know this kind of things that, no, I can deal uh, four teams, <laughs> no, I can deal. <laughs> As, okay, you can do it, but what, <laughs> what happened with this, no? So as I don't enjoy, I only think what is go what is what the audience is going to enjoy. Oh, sorry, because my language. Um, you, I, I told you my English is very bad. And sometimes I sometimes I feel I'm I'm stuck. No, but well, but the reason is this. I think you always need to choose what is better for the trick, 
And for me, there is wonderful techniques, wonderful slates, wonderful moves. Also, there is wonderful mathematical principles, uh, gaff cars, uh, tricky apparatus, I don't know. And the only thing is to choose, to choose what is better each time, no? That's what I do. How do you choose? Like, How I choose. Because uh, what, let's talk about creativity. Yeah. How do you create a picture? If you created, and I'm not exaggerating here, hmm. Hmm. those that don't know what you work, I would be willing to bet you created thousands of card tricks over I your... don't know, but probably, yeah. You created so much magic. Yes. What, how do, there's some people that are going to be watching this that are desperately trying to create something and haven't even created one trick. But perhaps, but perhaps that's the point. The, the thing is, I, I never sit and I say, okay, I need to create a trick. Go, create. <laughs> no, that, that for me that don't work, no? I create because with the time, no? First I learn. The first thing what I do when I started to be a magician is to learn what the other people do and learn why this is good. Very difficult, no? When some people go and do triumph and you are oh, amazing and one year after that you know how triumph works so you are not impressed again by triumph and another guy arrives and says no I do triumph but when you spread there is not the selected car but the number in the car tell you if you count you arrive to the car and you f feel a surprise and you say oh now I'm surprised by triumph is necessary you understand that this is because you know the other trick but this is not better this is worse and it's very difficult to have the criteria that something that for you as a magician is good for the audience is not so good and something that you as a magician you think okay this is this is okay because you saw 100 times in fact it's very 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 good no so my my friend and master Gabi Pareras, he says always he said always that that the trick speaks, and somebody asked him, and he, once I remember, and he said, Gabi, but what you need to do to hear the trick, and he said, first shut up, <laughs> because sometimes it's a clever idea. Sometimes magicians we we have our prejudice is like okay as you said okay i am a magician that i don't like mathematical trick i don't like self-working and you choose this and you receive an idea that can be a wonderful self-working card trick and you say no i don't like and you don't look or the opposite you think oh i am very i am not skillful oh you need to do a technique you need to do a move. This move is very difficult. I spend 30 minutes and, and I am not able to do it. This is not for me. And perhaps it's for you. But you need to spend one month with the move, not 30 minutes. So at the end, it's a question of criteria. So what I do when, when the secret to create all these tricks is first, I enjoy a lot the process of creating things and move and change things and later I have the criteria to say okay today this is very bad nothing happened I enjoyed today so I started to meet with a friend a lot of years ago Fernando Pelayo here in Toledo and we took magic books and we chose a trick and we started to, to change and most of the time we make the trick worst <laughs> change things no but sometimes, ah, hey, this idea is good, or this other idea is good. So, and little by little, you develop the tools to, to, to create. So at the end, it's, it's, like, um, it's like composing music, you know? You play and you play and you play and you don't like and you don't like and you don't like, but you are not suffering, you don't think, oh, it's... No, at the end, oh, I like this, no? okay this is going to be the song mm, 
Alan Menken, a composer, he said, is like uh, uh, in a mine, looking for diamonds in a mine. No? You are... Ch -ch -ch. How do you say in English this? Yeah. Ch -ch. Uh, pick up, mine. Pick up. Yeah. You are pike, mining, you are mining. Ch -ch -ch. And you feel nothing. Ah, oh, not, you feel nothing, you feel nothing for one hour, two hours. And you think, oh, this is going to... Ah, I am tired. Uh, this is not going to happen. Huh? And suddenly you find a diamond and you don't mind to <laughs> what happened before, no? So I think everybody is creative and everybody can be creative. The secret is to the criteria is I create something and if it's very bad, I, I discard this and I continue because you know very well that in the marketing magic, one of the problems now is that we see tricks that are very bad and I remember in your show some years ago when you review items sometimes you have some guy invented this and invented something completely ridiculous and you make fun <laughs> to remember of this and 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 i think why somebody that loves magic put the four put the time in creating something he realizes that and, and i think he have no friends <laughs> because <laughs> this is very good advice you need to have a group of friends that you trust and with the confidence that they can say this is shit <laughs> what you did today oh terrible forget it mm -hmm. no and you need to appreciate that because if not you are going to start to develop bad magic and the problem is if you are going to put this magic in front of the audience the audience don't know about if it's yours is from another magician if technique is a slate of hand they only know if it's good or not and if it's not good you are not good if the magic that you do is not good you are not good for them oh this magician is not very good so criteria and enjoy the process i think this is the secret that is amazing sorry if i am talking a lot <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about mining. You've got to keep mining and keep mining that yes. diamond, which is a great, a great metaphor. Do you think that sometimes people give up, like they try and mine and they yes. mine and yes, and they give up, and the diamond could be there if they just yeah. carry on? Yeah, and in fact, you find this in a lot of um, tricks published in, in in books or in or even even um, marketing uh, tricks you can buy a trick with a gaff deck and you see oh but they perhaps they can print like this and you think this in 10 minutes but it's too late because the deck is printed so you you realize oh the guy was tired the guy worked he arrived to here and here he was so tired that he says okay i'm going to publish the trick here but perhaps he gave up too, too soon, no? And sometimes, I am sure, the guy says, oh, this is very bad, no, I am not going to, and he forget. And perhaps sometimes is, But also I think it's not a good idea to be obsessed with this, no? I think it's not necessary to be creative, to be a very good, great magician. And we know that Fred Capps was one of the greatest magicians in the history, and he was he was creative because he changed his tricks but he never created anything no there is not a trick that oh it's not like vernon or emsley no uh, and it's not necessary you can be a great magician without to create your own tricks so don't be obsessed it's more like a fun a sport a hobby to create your tricks and if you create 100 tricks and one is very good it's enough is enough because one very good trick is in fact is hard to see no so if you enjoy creating magic do it and if you don't enjoy creating magic don't worry don't do it it's, it's not necessary that's great that's really this great. is my my point of view i don't know if you i love it no i completely agree with you let me ask you this question for anybody who's watching this that isn't familiar with your work uh-huh you very quickly form a trick for us now would you do you want I perform something for you? Thank you. Do you want a slate of hand or do you want... 
<laughs> no, I'm going. I'm going. To, I'm going to do uh, the pro the problem uh, with me and this style that we talk about, Craig, is if I am with you in the same room and I can uh, let you pick a car or whatever, I do something different, no? But uh, I, I am. I was thinking, what can I do for the camera or something? So I I remember this trick that is published in a book in English. So if you want to know, and and if I move the 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 camera, I think you can see, no? You can yeah, see the the yeah. cars. It's only with three cars. It's it's like a. Uh, three car Monty, but the important card is the jack of spades. The jack of spades that is in the middle, eh? and is face up. Sometimes it looks the jack is face down. Sometimes it looks this, but don't forget, no, it's not the jack, it's the queen. Sometimes things, if this is the jack, if this is the king, the card face down must be the queen. But no, you know that no, because the queen is face up. No, no, the queen is not face down. The card face down should be the king, no, because the jack is the queen, should be the king. I will tell you the truth. The truth is, for this trick, I don't need the jack, I don't need the queen, and I don't need the king because I have no cards. I have. <laughs> I love that. It's very funny. It's very funny. I love this trick. I don't remember that. I'm gonna to have to go and get the book up. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's as, as you saw, as, as we were speaking. Uh, it's a. Of course, there is some slate of hand. Oh, I am revealing the method. No, <laughs> but there is not a self-working trick. That is the style that people more know about me. But for me, there is a lot of qualities in this super fast trick. No, because there is a lot of magic with only three cards and super fast. I use this as an opener a lot of times. That's great. There's so much magic that happens. <laughs> that was great. Is the book of English still available for people to buy? Yes, we we this is incredible. We did, I think, we are for the fifth edi uh, re edition. Reprinting, yeah. We reprinted and reprinted and reprinted and reprinted because uh, we make uh, the quantity of uh, copies and they sell, sold out and and again and again and again and it was reprinted very recently i think it was reprinted in september of 2020 or something like that so i think it was in shops from december or something like that no so yes now is a good moment because i think in every store you will find my two books because memorandum is more specific tricks it's more for people that love mnemonica or it's not a magic book for everybody it's not uh, like book in english but also it was a sold out uh, book and now it's reprinted again so now my two book in english are available uh, if you want to buy well i was going to bring that up actually first of all can people buy them directly from you no no, no please no <laughs> no please okay. do you okay. know what happened it is it's terrible i am completely disaster to make package send whatever i have no time uh, but uh, but i don't want to say no so people write me and uh, Woody, can i have a book with your signature and you send me and i say yes yes when i have time and two weeks later i, I am waiting for the book <laughs> yeah yeah i i am going to do one month the guy very angry <laughs> I am waiting for the book. I want my book. So at the end, I prefer if people buy the books in, in any shop. There is a lot. Sometimes people say, no, I want with your signature or I want something special from you. In this case, I try to do it. But I, <laughs> truth is, I prefer not <laughs> because I am very, 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 very slow for these kind of things. Well, that actually brings us on to, that actually brings us on to, and I wanted to speak to you about that. Yeah, oh my god, yes! <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm a big fan of mnemonica. I've been using mnemonica for a very long time. And yeah. as you know, I'm a big fan of size 7 as well. And I know very well, yeah. And I know, and I know you are as well. And I just wanted to give you advice to anybody that's watching this about stack decks and why you should use a stack deck. Because a lot of magicians, their attitude is, no, why would I use a stack deck? There's nothing that I can do with a stack deck. I can't do the regular deck. So. I, I, but, but do you know that I don't understand that? People explain me this. I, love, I have a lot of friends that they say, no, I, I, I don't want to have a stack. And I say, why? Why not? No, because you have to, to have the deck in order. 
Yes. <laughs> no, I like to shuffle. Okay, when you can shuffle after, no? You go, take the deck, you do a stack trick, uh, a stack, a side step, no? For instance, you open the deck, you do a trick with side stepping, and later you shuffle. No, but for a lot of times, this guy that they don't like to have the deck in order, they know five or six false shuffles. They can do. <laughs> <laughs> sorrow, uh, <laughs> strip out, <laughs> push through, but they don't want the deck in order. I don't understand. The only reason, I think, is because we are, some magicians, we are very lazy. And we, we want to not performing. We want to have the deck and shuffle, and I don't want to prepare. But the odd, oh my God, people pay to see your magic. You are going to perform and you don't want to put a deck in order? Really? You need only one minute to put a deck in order if you know how. Or you can have two decks, one in the pocket, another for practice, and because stack deck magic is so strong, it's so strong. For lay people, every deck is shuffled because it's the natural state of a deck of cards, no? So it's like part of the trick is done before. You did it at home before to start. And now you can obtain incredible tricks. If you see Juan Tamari doing the, the phone or Simon Aronson routines or the classic thing with size stevens, I, I don't know, uh, Stewart James or even Max Maven, wonderful trick with mentalism with a size stevens. I don't know why some people say, no, this is not for me. Oh, good magic is not for you. I don't, I don't understand this, Greg. I don't understand. I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. So if somebody, if somebody's thinking, well, okay, you've convinced me. What's the best? What's the best thing that they should do if they want to learn? Ah, to yeah, yeah. Is it best to go with mnemonica or mm. Okay, let 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 me do a little apology, <laughs> no apology, an apology, but defending a little the the stack deck magic, and I am going to convince you if you are watching this video, and you are one of these magicians that you think stack deck is not for you, stop, shh, don't prejudge, and hear <laughs> a little. I think the best thing at the beginning is side statements to go and you learn tricks with size stems. Very easy. You don't need memorization. Very, very, very strong. And what ha some people tell me, yeah, but what happens if I am uh, performing magic with size stems and something happens and the deck is shuffled? In this case, you only can continue with the rest of card magic published in the whole history. So <laughs> it's not a reason <laughs> to don't do size stemming. You study size stemming, you learn some trick, and you start to perform for the audience. When you are habituated to have a deck in order in your hands, and you don't mind if the deck is in order or not, that this is the best trick. Because at the beginning, I see when people start to do magic with the deck in stack, they are like this. No? They are performing like this. They don't want the people shuffle. They don't want to put the deck. They put in the table well, like this really carefully. And if you have the deck in order, you need to let the spectator feel it's not important, the order. So it's a very good idea to put the card like this and do some shuffles. It's not necessarily very difficult shuffles. It seems very easy to do, but it looks uh, shuffle. When you are habituated to this, then is the moment to start with a memorized deck. Mnemonica, Memorandum, Aronson, Redford, now, uh, there is more, no? But I think, in my opinion, the best is Memorandum. <laughs> that is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. But it's not because Igor. I. I. You know. I. I grew up in magic with Juan, so he teach me mnemonica much before the book was published. I learned mnemonica, I think, in ninety two or ninety three, and I used it for seven years, mnemonica. But one day I had an idea that I can do with mnemonica, and then I thought, okay, I need a new order. But I don't want, I am very clever. I don't want to lose the properties of mnemonica. So I created a trick and then I developed an order 
and then I changed the order and little by little I created a stack that is what I memorized and is published in my book that has a lot of new properties but also has every property in mnemonic and every property in Aronson. So when you learn memorandum you have the possibilities of the other two decks. But is this is like a second step, no? Is okay, you need to memorize, there is methods, there is I do some workshops and seminars about memorized deck. People come and they learn the deck, they memorize the deck in the same workshop. They start for instance now is yeah 17. In 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I can make people uh, memorize half a deck. Completely sure, no? Uh, so at the end, it's not very difficult. It's only to know the methods. But this is very complex world. First step, size studying and practice with the audience. This is my advice. That's fantastic advice. That's fantastic. But you know, because you use size studying a lot and you know how powerful it is. I love, I think a lot of people don't realize how powerful size studying is. I think yes. they think that all it can do is you look at the bottom card and you know what the top card is. Yeah, yeah. But there's so much more. And I've seen you take a deck, a new deck order. Yes. Do an amazing routine that blows people away. Si, by senor. the time that that routine's finished, you're in... You're in size seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> si, senor, is the name of that routine. Steve Beep put the name. Si, senor. Uh, yes, this is one trick that I perform sometimes because you know that when you perform in informal conditions, sometimes with some people has a deck, no? Or, oh, I have my, sometimes it's a sealed new deck that is in order. And in that moment it's like, thank you very much <laughs> to put in a stack in a moment and they can't believe what is going to happen. Yes, 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 it's very strong. And probably you learn stepping so soon in the, when you are learning magic, that very soon you you look say seven like a minor thing, no? It's like no, I am able now to do palming and second dealing and bottom dealing. And now say seven is not enough for my quality. And no, say seven is super 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 strong. But of course you need to study and rehearsal like every magic. No? I think the things that you can do with size sevens that you couldn't do with any other slide, no matter how good. You could be Darwin Ortiz and, you know, yes, you, yes. you know, you still couldn't do some of the stuff that you can do with. And the fact is, the, you know, you mentioned Stuart James. There's obviously yourself. There's, there's people like Darwin Ortiz. Yes. That are yeah. incredible to fight a band artists. Yes. But at the same time, they use stack decks. What does yes. that tell you? Yes. One of my surprises was that Dai Vernon was, was one of the most often practitioners of memorized deck. Dai Vernon did a lot of memorized deck, but as he wanted to fool magicians, he didn't tell to, 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 to too many people. Some people knew because they saw, oh, ah, he's using a memorized deck. But because he's so, 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 so powerful. Well, if you don't want to do memorized deck, as my friend Danny says, is your life. You will, <laughs> you will choose, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea to start to use stacks. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. And and with uh, moving off from uh, stacks for a minute, you uh, obviously we've talked about your two books. We talked about memorandum. We talked about Western English. Yes, you've also brought out a lot of uh, video videos and sort of. Uh, what? Yes, like yes, I, I did a, a lot of downloads with Penguin and I and I am very proud of some of them because I did some tricks that I think are very, very, very powerful. I did also with Murphy some lecture. I did with Luis de Matos a set of DVDs with Danny. Oh, I don't know if you know this. This is the, the last one I did uh, last year or a little more with Danny Daorti. No, we, we did a show together. Uh, in the States uh, in 2013. Yeah, we, we do a tour performing together and lecturing together and create a show with very good ideas for two magicians. No, And sometimes you are in your club or you are going to do a show and two magicians go together and we thought why instead to perform once 
and the other, no? uh, one first and the other later, why don't play and do a little act with two magicians at the same time? And we created a lot of magic of this style, so it's three DVDs, no? it's, uh, also it's in download form, this, and this is uh, uh, with Danny and me trying to fool each other and, <laughs> and playing, and it's a very, very funny project. Uh, and, and the, and the size savings the downloads are for a Japanese company, it's the, the Impossible Co, no? Impossible mm -hmm. Company. Yeah. Mm. A lot of videos, it's true, yeah. If somebody's watching and they've never seen it before, and having watched this, they really want to try and get into your magic. Oh. And, and they don't want to go and get a book straight away, they want to kind of get some of your material out. Where would where would be a good place to start to get a good flavor? Of ah, character? yes. I don't know. Probably, probably mm, my favorite point. If you are looking only for videos, because if not, I try to everybody know me because book in English. I think is the best stuff I have published. Not the best. The more accessible for everybody. I think some tricks in memorandum are better than in book in English, but. Of course, memorandum requires other other level, no? But I think the language sometimes is a problem because people see me performing and doing some tricks because, you know, this is something from Juan Tamariz. I use the language also as a tool in magic, no? And I am performing with you and I say, Craig, I shuffle the deck. Can you name any card? Uh, six of clubs. What? Six of clubs. Six of clubs. And can you name any number? Uh, 15. 15, oh my god, it's very difficult. Six uh, six of hearts, 15. I am going to try. Clubs. Six, eh? what? Six of clubs. Clubs is treble, Tre uh, black? Yes. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Six of clubs, 15. Let's see. This is one, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 6 of clubs, like this? Okay. okay. <laughs> this, this kind of strategies I use a lot, no? It's like I hear perfectly, I understand the card, no? But later is hearts, no? Ah, you say club, oh, sorry. And because you don't speak English, people believe it. Mm. So they think, okay, he needs to know the card to do anything. But the trick is done one hour ago, no? Also, I do this with spelling a lot of time, no? I know that you rate, for instance, let's suppose... <laughs> let me... I am going to try. Let me let me know another card that you like, any card that you like. Uh, the Five of Diamonds. The Five of Diamonds. This is... Okay, I like Five of Diamonds. Oh, but I think... It, I don't... I am not sure if they, I have... Five of diamond in this deck, but I am going to try, no? So your name is Craig. I am going to spell your name and at the end of the of the name appear your card. Wow. Okay? Five yeah. of diamond. Craig. I only need to do like this. It's done. And the spelling makes your card appear. Your name. Craig. C R E G. Yes? No, there's a, there's a I. AI. Yeah. So this is not this is not the last one. No. No. This one. Yeah. Ah, Craig. Ah. And you say five of diamond. Ah, okay. It's the five of diamond. <laughs> and and because the language it works very for me it works very well, no? Because it looks genuine, no? I pre oh oh of course he don't know how to spell and the card is in the right position from the beginning, no? So when I perform and people see me in video, they think sometimes, but this style don't fit with me because I can't do this or I don't like to. That's the reason if I choose, I prefer people go to the book because in the book, you don't see this kind of, you don't see my style of performance. You only see the creation of the tricks. But anyway, if you want to look for a video, probably Penguin Live, uh, lectures, the first and the third. Okay. Probably is the the, the the first point I will I will recommend now. 
<laughs> Perhaps tomorrow I will say something different. But <laughs> and I've thought of another question that I'm probably going to get asked. Oh, if people already know a stack deck, oh, and they don't want to learn your stack deck, uh huh, will they still be able to get something out of your second book? So if they know, for example, mnemonica. Yeah, mnemonica. Especially how, how many stack specific tricks there are in your book. Yeah, yeah. especially. Um, Of course, especially if you know mnemonica, because my stack and, and Juan's is familiar, no? It's like, it's part of the same world. In fact, I have a trick in which I am with my stack, I do a trick, and at the end of the trick I am in mnemonica. And the opposite, because sometimes I am in a dinner with friends or after a convention, you know, in a festival craig like Blackpool or whatever, you are in the Rusking, you are, and you ask for a deck, borrow a deck. And some magician gives you a deck in mnemonica with the nine of diamond and the four of clubs. And then I say, ah, no, but this is in, no, no, let me do like this. And then I do a trick. And at the end of the trick is my, in my stack. But people don't recognize even the same magician think the deck is shuffled now. And now I use memorized deck. So if you use mnemonica, I think you will find a lot of things in memorandum. If you use Aronson or Redford or whatever, even like this, there is, of course, I write a lot of tricks, depending uh, stack tricks, but also there are, I think, great, good ideas and even some revolutionary idea in Memorized Deck. There is something that I call the Siamese Deck that I am not going to talk about now because it's very, very good. And so I want to make like secret that, but this is in Memorandum. And this is amazing for every stack that you use. Wow. I love the tease. That's awesome. <laughs> Not because now I know you are going to look for the book. <laughs> Correct. It's you over there. To... It's over there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's amazing, Woody. That's absolutely fantastic. And this has been a fantastic interview. But oh, I, want, I, want to, I want to finish off by asking one question. Let me know. What's next? And what I mean by that, and let me frame this, let's just assume that the world goes back to normal soon, because obviously it's been a difficult year. You've not been able to travel. You normally do. Yes. Um, let's just assume that at some point in the very near future, everything gets back to some sort of normality. Yes. What are your plans? Because you have had a legendary career. You've traveled the world. Completely, you've won yeah. very high profile competitions. Your creations and your videos and your books and your tricks are studied and performed by people all over the world. You have headlined almost every single magic convention. It's true. <laughs> worldwide, whether it's in Texas, Magic Fest, Blackpool, whatever it may be, you are always in demand. Yes. You, if true. you retire tomorrow, <laughs> which I know you're not going to do, but if you did retire tomorrow, your, your work and your legacy would live on forever. Oh my God! Thank you, thank you. That that relax a little for me. But you're not gonna. You're not gonna. I know you're not. So, is there anything left on your magical bucket list the, that you haven't done that you want to do? The truth is, I was not conscious of, about this that you are telling. I, you start to work, and then you want. As I enjoy a lot performing magic, more work, more enjoyment. No, for me it was like I am going, doing, and doing, and I go and I perform, and they phone me and they want me in this festival and later. And in 2008, 18, excuse me, 2018 was the the time I I realized, oh my God, I I am doing something because they book me for closer of the close-up gala of FISM, no? in, in, in Korea, in Busan. No? And in 2006, it was my first FISM in Sweden. It was Leonard Green on the stage closing the close-up gala. And I was like, this is, this is the dream. No? And then it was like, oh, I'm doing it. Wow, <laughs> wow, no? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> So, you know what happened now? The pandemic made me um, relax a little and then I feel it was too much. I mean, I mean, I enjoy to perform a lot and I enjoy travel. I, I miss my travels. I want to do more festivals. Of course, I want to do that. No, But in the last years, because I was traveling so much, I didn't write 
too much. In fact, I created a lot of magic. I have like 10 books published in Spanish and only two translated to English. And then I realized that I don't want to lose that part of creation, rehearsal, writing, etc. So for the pandemic, when people tell me, ah, are you doing virtual shows no? for the camera or whatever? Because you know my style of magic, because I do a lot of verbal magic or things like that, is very appropriate for that. But it was, no, I, I am at home. For first time in a lot of years, I have time to think, create, write. So now I am writing four books at the same time, Greg. <laughs> Or <laughs> one on tricks is the second part of a book in English and the name is another book in English <laughs> and this is this is almost finished this is a I don't know perhaps it's 70 percent if writing and the other 30 percent I am writing now no but this is uh, the, 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 the most immediate book later I am writing memorandum 2 with more and more stuff that I have with memorized deck, art stack, etc. Also, I have a theory book because now I am older, my friend. And after all the travel, all the competition, all the experience, and also because the, the things that I learned from other masters here in Spain that they passed away, like my friend Gabi or Ramon Riobo, or I feel, I, I think to, is my obligation to transmit part of that of that knowledge because I had it because I was fortunate to be in the right pl place in the right moment, but not everybody, no. So I am writing a book about this, and also I am writing a book like uh, anecdotes, no, things that happened to me in a convention or performing in that uh, that and bit of business no what happened that day that i did do and did and it was a mistake ah i thought so the solutions i think are very good ideas so this is my most immediate project to work in these four books but also i will make more videos more lectures etc and i will travel in the moment <laughs> I, the borders will be open i promise you i will be in a lot in a lot of festivals again <laughs> In fact, I think my first festival out of Spain is in October in Sweden. So it's close, it's close, my friend. And are you planning on coming over to England again at some point? Oh my God, I, I would love because uh, I have a lot of friends, in, especially in London. I did perf uh, lectures for the London uh, Association for the Macmillan Group. Uh, of course, the, 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 the convention, uh, the session. I did a lot of magic there and I love, I love UK, especially the London area because also I like very much theater. So I go there and I stay in London for one week and I see <laughs> West End shows uh, for the whole week. But also, I don't know, I love Blackpool. <laughs> People don't like, <laughs> but, but they have a lot of friends there. You know, uh, and I did a lecture tour in 2012 and not again. And I was preparing something before the pandemic, but the pandemic closed. So I will do for sure. I don't know when, I don't know how it will be, but probably 2022, 2023, you will have me in the UK performing, lecturing for sure, for sure. I want to do it, yes. Now, before we wrap this up, I just want to ask you one other question, which is, have you ever learned, have you ever dabbled in any other branches of magic? I mean, we know you for your card magic. Yes. Have you ever done like coin magic? Or yes. Like I know when you were three years old, you were practicing the tour of a newspaper. Yes. Uh, which you told me, but it's, I've only ever seen you perform card magic. That's good, because I am terrible performing the... <laughs> the other magic <laughs> people tell me you are a close-up magician no it's not true i am a card magician i prefer to be big stage five thousand people and me with a deck of cards that on a table with coins i am terrible with coins but the truth is i did everything i did coin magic i do a lot of mentalism i i did stage illusions i promise oh. you 
Yes, with a friend of mine, we had a show together and we thought, oh, perhaps if this show is a good idea. I am talking 2004 or 2005, so a lot of years ago. But with my friend, we were, oh, perhaps it's a good idea to put a stage illusion act. Okay, we can make some uh, stage illusion with a board, cardboard, no? Uh, and we create the boxes and we rehearsal for two weeks and then kind of metamorphosis effect with my friend and we change each other and after two weeks I we thought ah we are not very good doing this remove it for the show but for two weeks I was and the thing is it's a good idea to perform as a hobbyist what is not your speciality because now I see a lot of magicians that they started magic in Monday and Thursday they say no I only do cards <laughs> Oh, no, wait, wait. <laughs> I think it's necessary to try everything to develop the taste and at the end you will choose what fools yourself more, no? But uh, fools, fool? <laughs> I think I think I am not using the right word, but you understand me, I no? Understand yeah, 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 yeah. But I think yes. Every, I, I do ev I, I did everything and now sometimes I perform or I rehearsal Cups and balls, linking rings, but at home, <laughs> not for everybody. No? Mm. But yes, I do everything. Yeah. That's good to know. And, and finally, yes, I have to ask you. Every time I've seen you perform, you branded with either the Super Woody T-shirt or a <laughs> Superman T-shirt. I've never seen. I've seen you a lot, and I've never seen you perform in anything else other than that. Is there a reason for that? I mean, it, it, I, I associate, yeah. is it like a branding thing? I associate you, well, I, I, it's kind of like a Pavlov dog thing for me. When I see a Superman logo, I don't think <laughs> Superman, I really? think Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, of course there is a reason, and I am going to tell you the reason. The reason is this one. <laughs> uh, some years, I, I, I love comic books, I love superheroes, I, I am more, the, the truth is I am more Marvel than DC, but the DC logos are more beautiful. So uh, I started, I always dressed something like this in my real life, but at the beginning when I perform uh, as a magician, I change it and I put a shirt and a vest, probably because I saw other magicians per performing like this, no? And in 2012, I think, I prepared a show that the name was Super Booty. And the topic was about magicians. We are the real superheroes because we are the guys that do impossible things. Perhaps you, you uh, not very useful things because, well, okay, I found the, the car, but it's a superpower. No? And then I started to do this show with a t-shirt with this. Superman symbol, <laughs> and this is true, eh? and my wife, she iron at home, no? We have the tax, the tax, uh, that, so I, I cook and she iron from the beginning. It was like part of the agreement. And she hates the normal shirts because the buttons. So when I started to buy a lot of this for the show, she told me, ah, oh, it's much better. <laughs> if you only use this and then <laughs> it's like a tradition and it's it's like branding but not it was not marketing it was casual my friends and my family when it's my birthday they the present or usually is t-shirt with superhero symbols superman or flash or batman or whatever but always so my wardrobe is is a joke <laughs> if you see my wardrobe is <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of colors and shiny shields and this is my this is the way i uh, dress in my real life so the only thing i do when i am going to perform is i put a jacket <laughs> that is that's the reason i don't know if it's, it's, it's not very adult no, no my okay it's an important lesson there which is don't try and do what everyone else is doing be yourself you know you've become an incredibly successful magician by doing stuff that other people don't do and that's a lesson that people can learn from. Dave Vernon said be yourself 
but this is very difficult if you don't know who yourself are. And the thing is, I did this in the past. I had the shirt with Superman symbols in because I like it. And I don't know why I thought it was not a good idea to dress like this in front of the audience when you perform magic. And the more authentic you are in front of the audience, is the easiest to communicate. If you are in a character, if your text is memorized and only you repeat, if you are, if you dress in a different way, the usual, I am not, I am not suggesting the people must, every magician dress with Superman shit. no. <laughs> but I say is, if you dress very elegant in your job because you, but you work in a bank or you go to a wedding and you put especially, of course, of course it's, it's, it's okay, no? I, I am not against different, but it's good if there is your personality in the way, not only you dress, the way you talk, the objects you use, etc. For instance, Juan Tamariz always tell me one of the greatest card magic tricks, because I love card magic and I try to do every trick, is the, I don't know, apuñalada, the card that you find with a knife. You take the knife and you glass. And I never do this trick and I don't want to do the trick because I don't like knives. It's, it's very primitive, but I think the people is going to tell the difference, no? When I take the knife, people will, will... So I think more authentic you are, better your magic can be. And this is the lesson. <laughs> What an amazing way to end this interview. That is incredible advice. <laughs> I don't know. You are a legend. You really are, Woody. I've been a big fan of yours for a very long oh, time. Oh, great. Okay. I will sing your praises to anybody that I speak to because you've inspired me so much in so many ways. Oh, thank you very much. I, 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 I appreciate a lot. You, you flurry me with these words. Uh, but I know you like my magic because I remember you performing one of my tricks and I, I enjoy it that a lot. Uh, Craig, uh, it has been a pleasure, a real pleasure to be with you this night. Yes. Wonderful. If people want to reach out to you, do you what's the best way? You've talked about doing seminars and I know you don't have an online shop, but is there a way that people can communicate with you? And Yeah, yeah, I, 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 but I am in social media, I am in Facebook, I am in Instagram, etc. But I am not very... Uh, my Instagram, I publish, perhaps I put a, a picture each two months or something like that. I am, not, But I am very present in Twitter because I am uh-huh. very old people. <laughs> so in Twitter, I usually write almost every day and I announce the first place uh, my project no if i am going to do a workshop a seminar a travel i will be in this convention twitter is the place you are going to fo- to find this the easiest and fastest way and if you want to communicate with me you can write me uh, an email or in twitter you can send me a dm so of course i am there for everybody and what's your twitter handle who the other one <laughs> Very easy. At Woody Aragon. <laughs> and my website is woodyaragon.com. Very easy. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't even guess that. Woody, it's amazing. I very much hope that we get to see each other in person again soon. Um, you are brilliant. And I hope that the people that are watching this that don't know your work are inspired to go off and study it. Because if they do, they will become better magicians, I can guarantee you. Oh my god, thank you very much, Kai. Thanks, thank you very much. You're amazing. Guys, don't forget to leave a comment down below to Woody. I'm sure he'll see it. And uh, make sure that you connect with him on social media. And if you want to support videos like this, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. So I'll see you again. Woody, thanks very much. Take care. Bye, everyone. (laughs) 